In this video, we're going to be looking at five tips on using DxO's powerful retouch tool, which is used to get rid of unwanted elements in a photo. While object removal tools are a common feature in photo editors, DxO differentiates itself with its elegant implementation and powerful feature set. Before we go on to the tips, let's run through a few basic concepts. First, where do you access the retouch tool? The retouch tool can be accessed in two places. First, from the button in the top toolbar, and second, within the detail palette. Next, how do you use it? To better understand its usage, let's work on this image. As you can see, an unsightly cloth is ruining what should be a pristine and untouched view of nature. A perfect case to use the retouch tool. And that brings us to the first tip, know the limitations of the retouch tool. Conventional object removal tools, such as retouch, are best used when the unwanted object is small in size and can be covered up by pixels located in another part of an image. For larger objects which take up a significant portion of an image and for which no pixels can cover, I would instead recommend using generative AI tools which I'll be discussing in my next video. Moving on, I'll click the retouch button. That brings up a panel of what DxO calls a settings palette which contains all the tools and its associated options. The most important of these are the selection buttons. This lets you choose between opening the retouching brush for a new mask, adding a stroke to alter an existing mask, erasing a stroke to partially or completely remove a mask, and using the transformation tool, which I'll be demonstrating in a moment. The palette also has a number of options. Size adjusts the brush's diameter. Feathering alters the hardness of the brush. Opacity adjusts the transparency of the repair. The display mask checkbox displays a blue mask for different corrections. To remove the cloth, I'll simply brush over it. And just like that, the object was removed. As you can see, DxO automatically selected a source area it deemed suitable to cover the target area. Unfortunately though, the selected source image is not looking like the best choice. No problem, I'll move the source by dragging on the handle. There, a better result. And this brings us to the second tip. For a good blend, pay attention to the feathering. If the blend is not looking natural enough, I recommend the first thing to do is to play around with the amount of feathering. As you can see, as I increase the feathering, the edges become softer, more diffuse, and semi-transparent. In some cases, a higher feathering does make the correction look better. In this case though, the correction is not matching well with its surroundings. As such, I'll reduce the feathering. There, a better result. One problem though with our removal is that it has made the rock surface look a bit too jagged. That brings us to the third tip, use the transformation tool for a better blend. In case you didn't know, the transformation tool was added just two years ago in Photolab 6 and it's one of the unique features of DxO's implementation. I'll click transform. As you can see, transformation handles appear. I'll hover over the widget. As the cursor changes, I'll drag to adjust the orientation. There, a better result. Next, let's remove some of the litter in this beach. Once again, I'll set the mode to repair. As in tip two, I'll pay attention to the feathering. As you can see, using too high a value makes the edges a bit too soft and unnatural. I'll settle on a lower value. By the way, notice as I change from repair mode to clone mode, there really isn't much of a difference in the quality of the correction. But more on the difference between these two modes later. As these settings look good, let's remove the rest of the litter. Now 
Next, let's work on something a little more challenging. Let's remove this person. Unfortunately, the person is partially blocking the ship. How do you handle this? And that brings us to the fourth tip. For more complex tasks, break down the problem into smaller pieces. To do that, I'll start off by dealing with the person's lower half first, which has no obstruction. Next, I'll deal with the head. I'll drag the source to an area which visually seems like a good match. I'll use the transform tool to make the replacement even more natural looking. There, that's looking good. I'll get rid of the remaining elements. And there you go, the beach has been cleaned up. So that is how you deal with complex problems, break it down into smaller pieces. Finally, let's remove the wires in this image. Once again, the wrong way to approach this problem is by removing the wires all at once, as I'm doing here. Let's do it correctly, piece by piece. As you can see, I'm achieving better results. Once again, I've set the mode to repair with maximum feathering, which works fine for this problem. However, notice as we come to this particular contraption, as I try to replace the wire with something suitable, the blend is looking far worse than before. The source image is appearing smudged and looks different from the area I've selected as the source image. Why is this so? The reason for this is the behavior of repair mode. In repair mode, the untouched tool takes the brightness, contrast, and color of the target area into account when creating the source image. It is not a direct replacement. And that brings us to the fifth tip. Use clone mode when there is a large visual disparity between the target and source areas. In this case, you can see that there is indeed a large visual disparity between the target, which are the areas surrounding the wire, and the source, which is mostly the crane. Therefore, following tip 5, the better mode to use is clone mode. This mode will simply duplicate an area without attempting to change the source's appearance. As you can see, it gives a more natural looking result. In any case, if there is any doubt at all, simply switch modes and compare the results. It only takes one tap. Here is the before and the after. So I hope you found this video helpful. Let me know if you have any other tips in using the retouch tool. Write it down in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. And if you like this content, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share to help keep the videos coming. Until the next video, I'm going to see you in the next one. Bye for now.